infrastructure that you implement, you rarely call this. Here's Clang AST dump, a very simple function. And here's what you get out to show you the, the representation of the AST. Shows you the line column information, the types, and the structure. Here's a slightly different example with a float. Um, notice it inserted some implicit casts. So even though the ASTs reflect the source code, sometimes the semantic analyzer will adorn the AST with information that reflects C. So for instance, C does default promotions when you're mixing integers and floats. So this reflects the C language, even though it's not directly in the source code. Here's another um, switch uh, for viewing the ASTs using GraphViz. Um, it doesn't contain as much information, but certainly someone could go in there and add as much information as they want if uh, they determine that this is a useful tool. Uh, for most of our debugging, the previous uh, dump is much more useful for, for us. <coughs> so tying some of this together, um, here's, um, let's say you were using AST dump and you were frustrated with the volume of information that was coming out and you wanted to write a custom little function to just dump all function calls. Well, that's what this code does. There's um, a, an a, uh, uh, AST consumer hook that gets called. This call dumper iterates through all of the statements. And here, using the dynamic cast uh, mechanism, checks if it's a call expert. If it's a call expert, it dumps it. Right? Very clean, very easy. Um, and uh, that's the spirit um, of the ASTs. So um, do, how many minutes do I have left now? Five? Uh, yeah, about five. OK. Extending Clang. So you can traverse the ASTs, as I just showed you. You can traverse the CFGs, which is a, a control flow graph that Ted will talk more about. Uh, you could use built-in data flow analysis, which is also part of the analysis library. And, and lastly, if you're um, bold, you could implement um, a subclass of minimal action, right? Let's say you were writing a source code browser and you just wanted to pull out the class names or the method names. And you don't care if the code is incorrect. That is, you don't care that semantic analysis would choke on it. Then you would write a subclass of this and it would be a fuzzy, a fuzzy parser, right? <laughs> Um, not, not, not syntactically fuzzy, but semantically fuzzy. If you wanted to write a syntactically fuzzy parser, you could use our preprocessor token stream, right? So there are many different options you have um, for reusing um, Clang. Um, and if you want to add a new language feature, well, you have to hack the usual stuff, right? Hopefully, if you're designing a language feature, you understand the language. So if you understand the language, hacking Alexa, parser, SEMA, all this stuff is just part of the job. Right, so, but we think a lot of people are going to be writing tools without adding language features, right? So it's a different client. Status, um, C and Objective-C parsing mostly complete. Um, we have some missing details with variable length arrays, some GNU extensions. Um, we can parse huge source spaces, and uh, we're very excited about it, and a lot of people have helped in the community to make that so. Um, I don't need to repeat that since I'm running uh, on time. And C++ parsing, um, Argyris um, is doing some really great work to uh, start enabling C++. And uh, there, there's a link you can go to. So related projects, we don't have any debugger support. So everything you write in Clang needs to be perfect. You cannot debug it. Um, <laughs> and because of static analysis, maybe it will be perfect, right? No. <laughs> Uh, we're going to need a replacement for libgcc. We're going to need headers. Um, and Anton is doing some work that might be interesting for um, the compiler driver. So there's, um, there's lots to do here. And we'd love to get some help from, from folks in the community. I'm done. <laughs> I will repeat the question. I will take a drink first. Okay. Yes? Uh, does the lecture preserve comments or code it? Does the lecture preserve comments? Um, yes, I believe there's a switch to preserve comments. We don't, uh, I think it's off by default, but there is a switch to preserve them. 
Yes. So one of the big problems for static analysis tools and refactoring tools is the preprocessor and the fact that you might actually want to analyze multiple condition, uh, multiple build configurations of the code. Um, is there any, any support in uh, Clang's preprocessor support to be able to, say, parse multiple conditions at the same time? So I'll paraphrase. That's a tough question to repeat. Um, it, it are, is there any fancy built-in support for when doing refactoring or, or rewriting to deal with multiple branches in um, the preprocessor, you know, if you have an if def or an if clause? The, an the answer is no. Nothing fancy built in. Um, and, uh, but like a lot of our objects, could be extended if there are great solutions to that problem. Um, I, I don't feel there are great solutions, but you know, I think you're, I know, Rob, you're great, and you can, <laughs> you can contribute and help us solve that problem. <laughs> um, okay. Yes. So one of those early slides talk about compatibility. So will it stay compatible with future versions? Okay. The question is: There's compatibility with GCC as it exists today, roughly at 4.2 um, in our world, and will it uh, remain compatible in the future? Um, I can't predict the future, right? Um, the intention is to be compatible with the mainstream of GCC. So for now, we're just worrying with the current mainstream. In terms of what's going to happen in the future, I, again, I, I can't predict that. Our intention is that if the world continues to use GCC and a lot of that world wants to use our product, we will do that. But it's so, that's such a dynamic uh, question, I can't really answer it um, fully. Contributors. contributors, patches, right. I mean, if more of the GCC community were to start contributing to Clang and bring those things over, then that would be done for us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so I noticed you have a, a pretty solid date, well, a year for full C object and C plus. C support. What about C plus <laughs> plus? So, um, the question is, well, first a comment that it looks like we have a good plan for C and Objective-C. What is the plan for C++? I didn't say much about that. Um, C++ is a really tough language, right? And we have some very talented people working on it. I can't, from where I sit, project. It would be uh, disingenuous if I said, oh, 2010. Right. It's easy for me to say, oh, if, if this is in 2009, then that's in 2010. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Conservatively speaking, we're probably two years away from any credible C++ support in Clang. Uh, 